this morning I mentioned something about bliss addicts and <laughs> and now of course we all like bliss, but there's can be uh, a pattern not with everyone, but with certain people where that's all they're going for is the bliss. And in that, they're bound by the bliss, like with any other substance. It's a subtle substance, but it's still a substance. If, you, if that's what your conversation with life is about, then there's a depth of living that's, that's overlooked. But what I didn't mention, and what is perhaps more important, is uh, suffering addiction. And I don't mean that in like, get over your suffering addiction. I mean, it can be like any substance addiction, can be very deep and automatic, and you may need help. And there are lots of help. There's lots of help available, someone was talking about them. The light, that kind of short-term therapy, there's also long-term therapy, and it's very good medicine, it can help you. But satsang is not psychotherapy. It's really important that you recognize that. Certainly there are therapeutic things that may happen in satsang, <laughs> and the whole culture uses therapeutic language, maybe rightly or wrongly, or in error or correctly. But satsang is not therapy. Satsang is not a conversation about your problem. And for most people, that's really what their conversation with life is. My problem. How is life dealing with my problem today? Is it triggering my problem? Is it supporting my opening? This is, satsang's not about that. It's not that your problem may not come up. Of course it may come up. But that's the jumping off place. It's not the conversation. And, you know, there's a little leeway, but really just a little leeway. And that's simply my error, because I'm of this subculture. <laughs> As I said this morning, Papaji had no, no patience for anyone who was more interested in their problem than they were in what was offered in satsang. He would kick them out. There would be an opening, and then they would come back, and they would say, leave, go. But, you know, I say, go someplace else. <laughs> go where you can get real help. Because if, if a you opening is actually repressing your problem and then it comes right back up, it's not really opening and you need something that can help you. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you were having a heart attack, I would say, go get some help. Satsang is not the place for you. It can't help you. On your way, you might want to consider facing death, but... <laughs> <laughs> I had a beautiful meeting with some psychotherapists in the Bay Area, and I, I hope we will meet again, because I really, really appreciate that we're all coming from the same place. Same with social activists, too. We're coming from a place of support and freedom and assistance. And we talked about, but, so what is the difference then? in satsang, and therapy, and the first thing I said was patience, that they have much more patience than I do, because <laughs> I don't have to and I'm not trained to, and, and then and the second thing is time, you know, I, I'm not here to be in a conversation about your problem over time. It can come up, it can come up again, but if it's coming up every couple of months and it's taking over your life and it's, it is the conversation you're having and believing, I really recommend that you not look to satsang to solve that. And that you not look to me to solve that. Or even assist you in that. That's not my role in your life. My role is very simple. And that's to, to point you <laughs> to the truth of yourself, which is vast and free and already present. And if a problem appears in that, it's, there's room. We all have problems. It's part of life. The human body is a problem in itself. <laughs> but there's space for that. 
And that's not the issue. It's not the conversation. So I, I believe it's important to get clear about that. Because otherwise you waste your time. And time is short. And you're looking to get something where there's nothing to be gotten. You're looking for support in your problem, and there's no support there. And that's ruthless. That's why Papaji assured me those who were ready for this would hear it. I, didn't, I don't have to teach you how to not have your problem be the issue of your life. I'm here to confirm that that crack or that fissure or that, that spark or that tiny bit of peace and light and truth and to throw you into that, to measure it, to have the light, how big the light is, be your problem. <laughs> how deep the peace is, Ooh, how much your heart can bear then the conversation with life is totally different. It's definitely not problem-free, but problems are then in support of a deeper conversation. Whether they're physical problems, emotional problems, mental problems, circumstantial problems, there's a clarity that's, that's here. So, okay? <laughs>